jumps. That's the same as three sheets of paper. Within the base station, we have not one, but two self-contained helicopters, which are ready to fly out of the box. Once we're ready to fly and we have the helicopter out, I can hold this here and put the pocket-sized base station in my back pocket. It's ready to go when you're ready. Now I'm just heading out now. It quickly reaches a top speed of about 20 clicks. The smaller and lighter you are able to make it, the more difficult it is, of course, to, to detect. The drone is so stealthy, even our camera has a hard time finding it. But behind its playful appearance is a highly sophisticated military tool containing three cameras. It works actually like a, a pair of, of flying binoculars. The British military uses those flying binoculars to scope out snipers in Afghanistan. They also use it to safely preview what's ahead. Instead of going in with a lot of force, like blowing your way through walls and stuff, you could stop a couple of hundred meters outside that area, launch the PD-100 and fly over and have a look. The concept came to Petter Muren when he was a kid. I still remember a dream I had that one day I would be able to build something small that could hover and something I could just maneuver around, land in my hand. Inspired by nature, his early models look like finely crafted insects from the future. One thing led to another and another, and one day, Petter struck a deal with a toy company. Together, we developed the first successful indoor toy helicopter. The Blade Runner. It was very popular, and, and uh, if you include the Ill illegal copies from China, um, it's probably produced in many million copies. Use that dough to help start up Prox Dynamics. The total mission should last for anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes. This isn't a toy. It's for real combat. For today's test, they do a small rebuild. We put in slightly stronger motor. We have modified software. And today we, we were testing if these things actually gave more in terms of distance. Worst case, uh, we, we lose on helicopter. Each one costs tens of thousands of dollars. Engineered using Petter's miniatures. Instead of spending time on, on trying to to make a big thing smaller. We started out with something as small and as light as our target was. It gradually more and more features and, and capabilities put into it. GPS, gyroscope, wireless links, squeezing it all in is an exercise in nano design. It's pretty amazing uh, and the most challenging part of uh, this development. And there are engineering trade-offs. I'm a little bit concerned that as we approach the top, we may have a little bit of turbulence from the uh, wind yep, yep. striking in the thermals there. Wind can be a problem. So can you notice there that we have the side of yep. the, uh, the cliff there and we can use that for some visual guidance as well. Mission accomplished. They've located their target hiding on the top of the cliff. Oh, it's just a matter of getting it safely home. Yeah, that's uh, concentrating on that now and do a uh, full speed flight home. They punch in their GPS location and the autopilot will bring the drone back to base at record time. So um, we are pretty happy. We, we had been flying far out and, and high up, but uh, the combination is, uh, is uh, the first time we've been able to, to do. The Black Hornet went 1,300 meters. That's farther than ever before. But uh, still, it's, uh, it's always uh, something to, to put in, uh, in the history book. Sometimes dreams do come true. There we go. Good. <laughs>